This video will cover the modeling of bridges in the SMS interface for SRH2D. We will take a step-by-step -step approach to explain the current options for bridges, along with some helpful tips and modeling techniques. Bridges and piers are important structures to include in an SRH2D model, and when built correctly, SRH2D can provide valuable information as to how they impact flow in different scenarios. We will now demonstrate the basic method for modeling a bridge and observe how it impacts the results. We begin by loading in a model which already has a mesh and SRH coverages created. We activate the boundary conditions coverage and using the create feature arc tool, we create two arcs defining the upstream and downstream sides of the bridge. These arcs need to be drawn across the full width of the bridge opening to ensure that flow does not escape around the boundary's edges. We select each one and note the direction arrows on each arc. It is important that both arcs have the same direction or else they can cause problems with SRH. The arc direction can be changed by right-clicking on a selected arc. The display of arc directions can be controlled by entering the display options for the map module and turning on or off the toggle titled Direction. We now select both arcs at once, right-click on them, and assign them a linear boundary condition. The structure boundary condition types become available when two arcs are selected, since they require both an upstream and downstream boundary to be defined we will select the pressure type. Note that among the current options for the pressure boundary condition, we can change which ceiling type is used. A parabolic ceiling is used to model an arched bridge bottom spanning the channel. The ceiling elevation can then be defined at the mid-span and edges. A limitation of using the parabolic ceiling type is that the upstream and downstream ends are equal in elevation. The flat ceiling type allows the ceiling elevation to vary linearly between the constant upstream and downstream ceiling elevations. In the case that a constant elevation across the width of the bridge does not provide a reasonable representation of the bridge, multiple sets of arcs may be used to represent multiple segments of the bridge. We will choose the flat ceiling type and set values for the upstream and downstream elevations of the bridge deck. The Manning's roughness coefficient defined here is between the water and the ceiling and depends on the structure being modeled. Starting with SMS 12.2, there is also an option for overtopping, which we will turn on. The overtopping option allows SRH2D to simulate weir flow over the bridge when water surface elevations rise above the crest elevation. Discharge due to weir flow is output at the downstream end of the pressure flow boundary. The magnitude of the weir's discharge is recorded in an SRH2D output file located in the results directory and is identified by the word internal, followed by an ID number which relates back to the pressure boundary. We will set the crest elevation to the top elevation of the bridge deck. The length of the weir is equal to the width of the flow within the pressure zone. The weir type will be set to paved. Different weir types use different values for the coefficients used in the empirical 1D weir equation. Our bridge's pressure flow boundary condition is now finished, and we can move on to methods for modeling piers. As previously mentioned, piers can be modeled by one of two methods, by modeling them as holes in the mesh or using an obstructions coverage. The intended use of obstructions is to model the added flow resistance caused by things such as piers, bridge decks, bank protrusions, boulders, etc. Because of the way obstructions add drag force to the flow equations, 
The immediate area around the obstructions will not have correct velocity solutions. They are instead intended to impact flow further downstream. Obstructions are defined using either arcs or points, and they are assigned to mesh elements that they overlap. The different attributes assigned to each obstruction determine the shape and size of the obstruction, as well as the amount of drag force they add. Some limitations are that no more than two obstructions should overlap at once, and for SMS, each obstruction needs to overlap at least one mesh element's centroid. The second method is to simply model the piers as holes in the mesh domain, since these holes will force flow around them and also add flow resistance. It is recommended to first include the piers in the mesh generator coverage as polygons, as shown here. The piers have their mesh type set to none. To better visualize the pier polygons, the display option for polygon fill can be turned on. Notice that it is now easier to distinguish the piers. This option is also useful for verifying that polygons in a mesh generator coverage are correctly defined. It is important that the upstream and downstream arcs are spaced at least one mesh element away from the holes in the mesh. This is because the pressure boundary is an internal boundary condition and as such should not be touching the border of the mesh domain. This can be verified by briefly turning on the snap preview display option to see where SMS will assign the boundary to the mesh. The simulation can now be run and the results reviewed. Plots can be used to view a profile of the bridge and SRH2D solutions. Here we see the shape of the bridge and its impact on the results. The bridge shape is displayed on the plot by using a polygon in a plot data type coverage. The polygon attributes provide the information needed to display the shape of the bridge and the coverage used is specified in step two of the plot wizard. This plot shows the profile of a line along the channel center line, which shows how the bridge forces a ceiling on the water surface elevation. We can also see that the velocity magnitude has increased within the pressure zone under the bridge. Because we used holes in the mesh to model piers for the bridge, we can see from the velocity vectors how the flow is moving around each of the piers. We've also run a simulation which uses the obstructions coverage to model the piers so that we can see the difference it has on the results. Note that the flow is still slowed down, but the velocity vectors do not show flow moving around the obstructions. This concludes the Modeling Bridges with SRH2D video. Please visit the Federal Highway Administration's website or the SMS Wiki pages to learn more.